Hello, friends, and welcome to a Chabra public shiur. We are joined by Rabbi Yitzchak Perdugo for an exploration into the exciting topic of praying by the graves of Tzadikim. I wanted to take the moment to congratulate the Chacham on his semicha for Dayanut, and may continue to spread the light of Torah. Uh, with that said, if you're in New York area or Florida, make sure to join our area-specific Chabura chats to stay connect connected with like-minded folks. Uh, the group in Miami, we're working very hard and we're going to have some uh, exciting updates, some new nice events. So uh, join that one. And thank you everyone for being here live. Uh, for all those who are going to be listening afterwards, Chacham, the floor is yours. All righty. Thank you so much. So it's funny. Somebody asked me last week, they texted me if it's mutar to go to the Lubavitch Rebbe's kever and write a letter to the Rebbe. So I said, you know what, I'll write something on it. And then Sina asked me a few days ago, ah, can you give a class on something? I said, okay, I'm working on this topic. He's like, okay, perfect. That's a much demanded topic. And I thought, I don't know how I could make it applicable to what's going on now. It's not near, let's say, uh, like Baomer or uh, Rosh Hashanah, people going to Uman, etc. But I saw today on the news that Ben Shapiro writes that the reason why Trump was victorious, I'm not quoting it word for word because I just saw somebody send me a text message. The reason why Trump perhaps is victorious is because he went to the Kever, the Lubavitch Rebbe a month ago. So I said, ah, perfect, Mina Shamayim. It's a perfect topic for the Shi'ur that we're going to be learning today and discussing about. So to jump into it, I sent a source sheet. Um, I feel like every time I just share my screen, it's pretty hard for people to follow. So if you want to just read the Teshuvah along with me that I wrote recently, you can go ahead. If not, I'll just leave it on my face, the camera, and uh, I'll be saying everything out loud. Bikitsur. So throughout Chazal, we do find places where it implies that Hachamim were going to Kevarim, and, or even we have from the Tanakh, from the Torah, and even seemingly speaking directly to the dead people. So, for example, we have the famous Gemara in Sota that talks about Kalev, that he went to, when he was part of the Miraglim, they went to go check out the land of Israel. He went to Hebron. And in Hebron, he said, Avotai, bikshu alai rahamim shinatsir ma'aitzit amiragilim. He says, he asks the Avot in Marat Machpelah, please, you know, help me out so, so that I can stay away from these uh, these people or from their Eitzah, from whatever they're planning. We also have in Masechet Ta'anit, we have a machloket between the the Tanaim, if there is a Tanit Sibur, meaning for whatever reason the Hahamim decreed, the Sanhedrin says, okay, we have a we need to decree a Tanit Sibur. Everybody has to do a public fast. And what they would do is they would go to the Beta Kevarot. Says the Gemara, they would go to the Beta Kevarot. It's not mentioned in the Mishnah, but the Gemara says that. And the Amoraim, they are they are they're arguing about this. Sorry, I said Tanaim, but it's Amoraim. The Amoraim are arguing about this. And one says that the reason we go to the Beta Kevarot is because we want to kind of humble ourselves and make us appear as we are like metim, as we ourselves are the dead people. And the other opinion says, no, the reason why we go there, so that the dead people can go there and or can uh, will be present in front of the dead people and they can ask for Rahamim on us. So it sounds like we're they're going there to talk to the dead people or have some type of communion with them. So the Gemara says, what's my binayu? What's the what's the nafkamina between these two opinions? The practical difference. So the Gemara says, Ika kivre goyim. In a case where you have a beta kevarot, but it's only for go there's only goyim there. There's no Jewish. So it's a cemetery of goyim, not a Jewish cemetery. So according to the opinion that holds the whole thing is because we want to be like metim, we want to humble ourselves. So kivre goyim also works. But according to the opinion that holds that it's all about asking them for rahamim, well, we're not going to ask the goyim for rahamim, we have to go to kivre Israel. So interesting, machloket Rashi holds that this machloket of maibinahu or the nafkamina maibinahu 
that's talking about bidiavad in a case if you don't have kivre Israel, then you go to the kivre goyim. However, the ritva he brings a shita that sounds like no. According to the shita that you're going there to show that we're like metim to be, humble ourselves, you should dafka lechatchila ideally go to kivre goyim because kivre Israel they're hashuvim kemo hayim they're like a living people the Jewish neshama the sadikim they live on forever. Mashen kem goyim. Perhaps they wouldn't, so therefore it's even more humbling to go in front of the Kivre Goyim. So that's a fundamental machloket. And we're going to see if we can extract some hashkafa, some uh, Jewish philosophy from the, this Gemara. Uh, so first of all, legabe psak halacha, lemaase, what's the halacha? So we have the Rif who brings down both shitot. He's not machria, he's not saying... You know, why do we go to the Beta Kivarim? He doesn't give the both she, he brings, sorry, he brings both Shitot and he's not Machria, he's not deciding deciding what's the reason. And therefore, uh, we don't know the Mai Binai who what's the seemingly you should give up Sakalacha because there is a Nafkamina. The Nafkamina is Kivre Goim. The Rif leaves it uh, par parved like that. We don't know. However, Harambam in Hilchot Ta'aniot, he's Posek. Like the shita that says hare anu kemetim that we're going there to humble ourselves, not to have any communion communion with the dead people, but rather to humble ourselves. Uh, he writes like this. Here's his lashon. He says yotzein kol ha'am lebeta kevarot ubochin umitchaninim sham. All the people they go to the, after the tefillah, they go to the beta kevarot and they they cry over there. And supplicate to Hashem. Klomar, and the reason says the Rambam, Hare atem metim. Ke'ilu imlo, ke'ilu imlo, ke'ilu, sorry. So because you guys are like metim, like these people. Imlo teshuvu midarachem. If you guys do not retract or go back, repent from your ways. So the Rambam is clearly telling us, the Psaq Alachai, is we go there to humble ourselves. Uh, and interesting, the Rambam, you can make a diuk, he writes the Lashon, he doesn't say Kivre Israel, Kivre Goyim. He left it parv. So the Rambam has a different shita, not like the Ritva that we mentioned, and not like the Rashi we just mentioned. Rather, according to the Rambam, either or you can go to where whichever one you want. Uh, I saw some Nosekilim, some of the Perushim on the Rambam that they try to learn the Rambam like Rashi, but uh, it seems like the Rambam left it parv, and meaning parv in the in the aspect that. You can choose whichever we want to go. You want to go to Kivre Goyim, Kivre uh, go, uh, Yisraelim, no problem, either or. Anyways, the Mi'iri, you have the Shulchan Aruch, you have the Tur, they're all Posek, like this Rambam. So, Le Ma'ase, the Halacha is, we can go to any type of Kever you want, either to the to the Goyim, Kivre, the, the cemetery, either of the Goyim, or to the Jewish cemetery. Uh, what's interesting is that the Gaon de Vilna, he asks, I don't understand. Why did the Rambam have that authority or that decisiveness to be posek, like the one that holds, it's about humbling yourself. Why, where in the Gemara do you see that when you open up the Gemara in Ta'anit? You don't see, like, why would be he machria? Why would he decide this way over that opinion? What's the reason? How do we know? Uh, it doesn't go with any klalei psak, seemingly. So I saw that the, there's a there's a perush on the Rambam, that's your name Haran. He writes that very simple. The Rambam has a klal. It is a general klal in psak as well, is that if the bavli is not machria, the bavli, it's not telling us which opinion to go like, and we see it brought in the Yushalmi, we go to the Yushalmi. So the Yushalmi, actually, when you open up the Yushalmi, in Ta'anit, it's it only brings down the opinion of the first opinion, which is going there because we're like Metim. We want to look at ourselves in a humble way that we're like Metim. All right. Uh, so in the Teshuvah, I brought the Yushami. So, okay. So we have a beautiful proof for the Rambam. The reason why he went with that Shita is because the Yushami only brought that opinion. So, however, when you just read the Rambam, We all, all we could kind of deduce from that is that the Rambam doesn't hold anything per se against going to Kevarim, right? It just sounds like 
you go to Kevarim to be the to, to awaken yourself to do teshuva. However, if you're gonna go to Beit Kevarim to go Kevarot to go visit Kevarot Kivrit Sadikim, there shouldn't be any problem with that, according to the Rambam. Seemingly, it's not a problem. However, I saw Haraf Kafeh, Haraf Kafeh, he writes that the reason, very interesting, because the Yushami doesn't say like this, but the, the, the Rav Kappa says, the re, these are the words, he says, amarachi. the Rambam, he was posek like this shita, meaning we go there because we're like, we're like metim, we're going to humble ourselves like the dead people. He says, em olama. says Rav Kappa, the reason why the Rambam was posek like this is because this fits in with his hashkafa. Right, according to the other opinion that the dead people, the second opinion in the Gemara Ta'anit, that the dead people are the ones that uh, pray for us or we make communion with them, you know, says Rav Kappa, that doesn't fit with the Hashkafa of the Rambam. So the Rambam perhaps was being posek because of a more Hashkafic issue, which is we don't have any communion with dead people, we don't talk to dead people, uh, we stay away from that business, but we can go there to humble ourselves. So that's Rav Kapach, what he says on that. And the truth is, is that it does fit with the Rambam according to what he says in other places. Right? We have uh, famously the Rambam in Hilchot uh, Avel for Abelut, he talks about, he says like this, he says, Vatsadikim in bonin lahem nefesh So regarding righteous people, when we're burying them, we don't build a nefesh on top of their graves, right? A nefesh is some type of uh, monument on top of it. It's different than a, you know, you have a uh, hachamim. Many times they use the word of a mitzayinin uh, etakevarot. You 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 put a sign on their kever. Okay, that's not a problem. Usually that's done for tuma and tahara, so people will know, especially in Israel, with koanim, where can you go, or people that are eating tuma, etc. You know, you have to have signs on top of the kevarim, so you know where can you go, where can you not go. However, a nefesh is something different. A nefesh is actually building a beautiful monument, a plaque, or some type of uh, structure on top of the kever, kind of to glorify the kever, to glorify the dead. Um, and says the Rambam, the reason why do we refrain from doing this? Says Rambam, Shedivrehem hem zichronam, because their words, the words of their spoke, their spoken words or their words that they've written, their Torah, hem zichronam, that is their memory. That is what we should connect ourselves to. And then he writes, Lo yifane adam kevarot. Says Rambam, a person shouldn't go. Lo yifane. These are very important words. We're gonna get into this more. But he says the person shouldn't turn himself towards or go in the path of visiting kevarot. Also, remember this word levaker. Right? He uses two very fundamental words here. Lo yefane. Yefane usually means lefano to turn, and also he says levaker. Simply, let's say to visit ha kevarot. Don't go and visit kevarot. So here we have straight up seemingly from Harambam. Number one, we don't build. Beautiful structures on top of the Kivarim of Kibrit Sadikim. And number two, because again, number one is because the importance of their words, emphasis is on the words and not on their dead bodies. And number two is because he says Rambam is we're not supposed to go and visit Kivarim. Sounds like from this, if you take it literally, a person is not allowed to go and visit graves at all. You can't go to, you know, take a Habura trip to Morocco and everybody goes and visits all the thousands of Kivarim in Morocco. According to Rambam, seemingly from these words, that's a no-no. So before we get into unpacking this Rambam, first of all, the beginning of his words the about not building a nefesh for the tzaddikim, that's from the Yushalmi. Already the Yushalmi says that. Um, and it says, Divrehem hen hen zikronam. Again, simply like what the Rambam said, we try to remember what they said, their words. That's where we put emphasis, not on their physical bodies. Um, and then, however, the second part of the Rambam, where he writes, Lo yefane adam libakera kevarot, a person shouldn't go to visit kevarim. There's no mikor for that. The nosekelim, they can't find the mikor for it. 
nowhere. It's not the Yushalmi. We don't see it in the Bavli. And the Rambam just kind of threw it in there. So I saw that Rav Moshe Tzuriel, Allah Shalom, he passed away recently. It was a tremendous Tamil Hacham. He writes that it seems to him that the Mekor is from Avot Rabbi Natan, that the source for this is from Avot Rabbi Natan, that says, ah, he, he tries to bring it from there. You're not supposed to go to the Beit Kevarot. However, I looked I looked it up, and if you open up Rabbi Natan, the Avot Rabbi Natan, that the source there is talking about uh, somebody who's going to be a Haver. If you want to be called a Haver, what's a Haver? A Haver are people, we find it throughout Shas and the Mishnayot, that they're people who were stringent, Tamilei Hachamim, that were stringent on eating their, their all their food, their chulin, in a high level of, uh, of, of tahara, in a purity, in a pure way. So it's an extra le level of stringency of a person who wants to take this upon his life. And that's what the Avot de Rabbi Natan is talking about. And it's not talking about, you know, random people, or not random people, but the regular person. You're talking about a higher level of people, and it's not about anything but Tuman Tara. Whereas the Rambam, when you read it, that's not talking about Tuman Tara, it's not talking about Haver, it's talking about across the board, all people, they should not go visit Kevarim. So from the Rambam, we still don't have a Mekor for it, and could be perhaps we'll get back into it, but maybe he's just throwing in a, uh, you know, a certain Hashkafic issue that he wanted to put into the Mishneh Torah. So we'll get back to that. Um, anyways, like we said, seemingly the simple pshat, you shouldn't go to visit a kever. And I've seen many, many people bring this as the, as a mikor, especially the Maimonidian people. They're like, ah, you can't go to kevarim. It's a surah. The Rambam says, you're not allowed to, from this halacha in halachot avel. However, if you open up the nosekelim, you open up the mifarshim, the commentators on the Rambam, he writes in, they they write, they 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 weren't comfortable, let's say, with with the simple reading of the Rambam. And they they gave different pirushim. So for example, the Radbaz on that Rambam, he writes, what does it mean Levakera Kevarot? The words Levakera Kevarot, that means to liftoa ha kever amet, to open up the kever and to check the dead person there. Right? And that's something of Darke Muri, you're doing in the ways of the Goyim, and we're not supposed to do these type of things. Right? However, says the Radbaz, the Radbaz was, you know, he was posek, like the Rambam, he was a Talmud of the Rambam, a Talmud of a Talmud of a Talmud of a Talmud, living in Mitzrayim, he was a chief rabbi of Mitzrayim, he writes, no, of course it's okay to go and uh, and visit the uh, graves, like he says, The Jewish people, we have the minhag to go and you know prostrate ourselves on the on the graves of the dead people. So of course, this is not what the Rama means. The Rama was just talking about opening up the kever, which is a dark emori thing. Okay, we'll get back to that. And the Rivash, the Rivash, however, he comes before the Radbaz. I don't know if the Rad, the Radbaz seemingly didn't see the the words of the Rivash. But the Ridvash writes, he first of all, he pushes off a perush similar to the Radbaz. He says, no, to open up the kever, that's not a problem because we have already a, a, a basis for this from the Masechet Simachot that talks about that they would actually go and open up after within three days of the burial, they would go and open up the, the, the grave to make sure that uh, the people were still, the, the, the dead was actually dead and not alive and, you know, trying to save himself, etc. So he, he, he writes explicitly, that's not what the Rambam meant. Rather, the Rambam, what he says, the Rivash, is that, that the words of the Rambam are connected to what he said before. So let's read it inside. He says, he says, the Rambam wrote above, You're not supposed to make a structure for these tzaddikim. And he writes, Okay, so he says, that's, we make that so that people can recognize that's the who, who was buried there. And he says, And the Ramam said that Sadiqim don't need this. Because they're good. Do oh, interesting. Now he says that the good things that they've done, that's what we remember. Okay, this uh, Masim Tovim can also mean their Torah learning. Oh, I think I lost you on the camera. Yeah, the the Masim Tovim, who they are as a person, as a as a as a ben Torah, as a person following the mitzvot, ben mitzvot. That's who we remember. 
And then says the Rambam, so says the Rivash. Rav Yitzhak ben Sheshet, he says, Klomar she'en le'abit el bet ha'kevarot u'libinyan she'al kivrehem ki im le'ma'asehem. Says the, the Rivash. When the Rambam says, lo yefane adam le'abit ha'kevarot, that means don't go and look at the at this the binyan, this nefesh that's on top of their kevarim. Rather, you pay attention to their, their ma'asim, to their Torah, to the mitzvot that they've done. So, very interesting Rivash, and the truth is that the Kesev Mishnah, Maran Bet Yosef, or Yosef Cairo, he also brings down on his parish of the Mishnah Torah, he just brings down the Pshat of the Rivash. He doesn't bring down the Radbaz. The Radbaz was a contemporary of, of, the, of Maran, so perhaps he never saw what uh, the Radbaz said. But nevertheless, the Kesev Mishnah, the Rivash, they're holding that when the Ramam says, don't visit graves, don't take it literal, it means don't go and pay attention and focus and emphasis on the buildings on top of their kevarim. So according to both these gedole, uh, I guess the Rivash is Rishon, the Radbaz is Aharon, or early Aharon, these great, great Mefarshei Rambam, both of them hold that it's okay to actually go to a kever, to go pray to the kever or pray by the kever. We'll see that soon. But um, nevertheless, they they defend, of course, they defend the minhag of going by the by the kever, but they have to interpret the words of the Rambam in two different ways. Again, the Radbaz, according to the Radbaz, it's actually opening the kever that the Rambam was against, and according to the Rivash, it's about staring and emphasizing and focusing on that building, that's the structure that's on top of their kever. However, who am I to argue with them? But dati, according to my simple understanding, you know, first of all. The words of the Radbaz is very hard to understand because the Rambam didn't talk about, mention anything about opening the kever. You know, and the Rambam, we have to remember the Rambam, as he says in the beginning of Mishnah Torah, he's writing this sefer for everybody to understand in very easy Hebrew. So when some when he writes, levaker, kever, levaker, how can you extrapolate opening a kever from that? You know, seems like just the simple visiting of a kever, that's what he's talking about. Um, on top of it, what the Rivash said about building the nefesh on top and then staring at that, how could the Rambam talk about that when the Rambam just mentioned before, you're not supposed to even build that for the tzaddikim. So it's a little, it's a, sounds like a little contradictory according to the, the Rivash because the Rivash is saying, the Rambam says you're not supposed to build it, to build the nefesh. And then when you go to visit the Kevarim, don't stare at the nefesh. But what do you mean? You just said that the Ramam just said you're not supposed to even have a nefesh on top of the Kever. So how could the Ramam hold that uh, you're not supposed to look at the nefesh? There, from the get-go, you should have never had a nefesh there. So the Ramam's words are very, very... Sorry, I mean, yeah, the Ramam's words, according to these these uh, Mefarshim, are very hard to understand. And the truth is, Baruch Hashem, I found that the Hatam Sofer... He also he also had a difficulty with uh, with these uh, mefarshim, and he writes he writes explicitly. He says like this: the hu He doesn't write on the radbaz, but he writes on the rivash's pshat that it's a dohak gadol. See, the Rambam was uh, pashtan. He says eh, it can't be that that's what the Rambam meant. It's it's a dohak gadol, and rather the he has a whole interesting thing. The Khatam sofer that back in the old days where they used to first bury people in trenches in the ground, and then they would go and collect the bones. That's where they would go and check and levakir the kevarim. And then they would uh, they would have a likut, they would uh, collect the bones and then put it somewhere else. So the Khatam Sofer says that nowadays that we don't do that, according to the Rambam, you're not supposed to ever go and visit kevarim. The Khatam Sofer learns the, 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 the simple way of the Rambam, that according to the Rambam, it's a sur nowadays, because we bury right in coffins, and since we bury in coffins and we don't ever have to go and check on the met again, according to the Hatam Sofer, the Rambam, we learned from that, that you're not allowed to visit Kivarim. And more so, says the Hatam Sofer, that perhaps in the Rambam, he says, Shuv asul kever mishum mori. Says the Hatam Sofer, the simple shot of the Rambam, that somebody who goes and visits Kivarim could be perhaps part of the Dachei Mori. So, ah, you see, according to the Hatam Sofer, the Rambam is the simple shot, and we have a problem. Fits in now; it fits in with the Hashkafa of the Rambam that 
you know, the Rambam doesn't want any communion with the dead people, like Rav Kafe said. Yeah, so we have the Hatam Sofer. And the truth is, is that uh, I, I, I saw this word being used, Levaker. I wanted to do some more research. What's Levaker? And I saw some uh, some academics, some Hachamim. They, they say that the Rambam's word that he used, Levaker, which is not so commonly used, especially in, in, in this sense, you know, we do have the common word Bikur Cholim. What is Bikur Cholim? To visit the sick, right? And here we're doing visiting the Kevarim. Visiting here is actually, could be perhaps, again, this is not conclusive proof, but seemingly a good plausible answer, is that the word Levaker could be a Arabic translation of the word Ziara. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but Ziara means to also Levaker, to go and visit. And it's a word, you can check it on ChatGPT or anywhere else. It's a word that the Arabs use to go visit Kivrei Tzadikim. They have Ziara, Ziara, I forgot how they call it, but they use the word Ziara. Ziara in Arabic, in Muslim tradition, is the concept that's similar to what the Sfaradim do and all the Jews in the Arabic world is that they go and they visit Kevarim, they, the according to who, who they think is holy, they go. And of course, we know that we see that all the Jewish uh, prophets and everything, they have taken them and Islamified them and made them into mosques and holy places for them. So Ziara, according to them, it's already it was a thing known. The Beni Shai brings it down, uh, talking about, uh, where was it? Uh, uh, where is it? Here, the Beni Shai. He brings it down in actually Parashat Re'e in the second year. He writes, Somebody who makes a nether that they want to do ziara, they want to go and, and visit Kvarim and it's Eris Israel, that's considered a nether mitzvah. Okay, so he holds that visiting graves is a mitzvah. This is a whole other thing about, you know, is, is visiting Kvarim a mitzvah? And this is a whole other sugiya where uh, people, let's say, from Eris Israel that they want to leave Israel to go visit Uman. During Rosh Hashanah, do they have a head there to leave? Because you're not supposed to leave Eretz Yisrael unless it's for marriage, unless it's for Tamu Torah, or if it's part Nasa. But, you know, to go for other stum things, that's so, no, that's so pashut. So someone I say, oh no, that visiting, it's a, it's, a, it's a mitzvah in itself, and therefore it's okay to leave Eretz Yisrael, whatever, that's a whole other discussion. But you see that the word ziara, they were, were using it, it's an Arabic translation uh, ziara, Levaker is the Arabic translation of Ziara, the common concept done amongst Muslims and Arabs, and of course the Jews as well. So, and, and this is nothing new. The Radbaz has a whole thing that many times the Rambam uses in the Mishneh Torah. He uses the lingo of Arabic in a Hebrew way. Uh, you have uh, Ibn Tibon when he's training his Hagdama for the Mornibuchim. He brings down countless examples of the Rambam using Arabic terminology, Arabic words in order to express Hebrew. Because again, Hebrew wasn't a spoken language at the time of the Rambam anymore. It was just a Lashon Chachamim or uh, it was a, a, a text that uh, it was used for writing Teshuvot and letters to each other, but it wasn't spoken. So therefore to express himself many times throughout the Mishra Torah, He's using Arabic. There's many beautiful works, and I was checking a few of them in English and Hebrew, that they have countless examples that they bring of how the Rambam used Arabic terminology in his Mishneh Torah. So according to that, beautiful. Again, the simple case is Levaker. is not like what the Radbaz or Rivash said, but rather it's to, to actually visit the graves like the Muslims were doing. They weren't doing anything but visiting the graves just like you know, we do for visiting Kibri Sadiqim. Um, okay. Also, I found proofs for this from the Pirisha. There's other proofs. So I, I was very comfortable and very assured that this is the simple shot of the Rambam. And he means Levaker. Now, besides the fact that, you know, you're not, let's say if, Darke, if it's not Darke Muri to go and visit the graves according to the Rambam, which we're going to get into that soon. Nevertheless, according to the Rambam, you're still not allowed to do things of Kiddushah by a Kever. Uh, the, the Ramam holds in many places, he brings down, that you're not allowed to learn Torah, you can't do uh, Tefillah, you can't do Shema, within at least for sure, within four Amot of the Kever. Just like a Met, you can't do it. Uh, so, so there's a Machloket of 
what's the reason? According to to the Kesef Mishnah, according to the simple Pshat the Gemara, you have a problem of doing this because it's it's called Loegle Rashi. You're you're causing the them to get jealous. These people, you're causing them to get jealous. Uh, the dead people. However, Rav Kafe, he explains that it's not talking about that concept, and rather that the 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 kever itself is not a clean place. It's a place where dead people are, and therefore it's not raui to go and do things of kedusha over there. So the Rav Kafe, he goes so far into saying that those people that go next to kevarim and they read tehillim there and they. Uh, they do, uh, uh, or even he says, by a dead person when they're doing the 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 the, the, tarav, the dead, and they're saying psukim and this and that. He says that's a big according to Rambam, that's a big no no, and uh, you shouldn't do that. Yeah, but um, so that, that that's fascinating. But of course, if you have outside the the Dalid Amot, you go outside of that. According to Rambam, I'll bring proof later. It sounds like that would be okay. There are, there. I think the Rav Haigo and they bring down the Shita that even uh, the whole Beit kever is a problem and you can't do anything there, but the Ramam doesn't seem like that. Fine. So, yeah, let's go. So, so, so now what we have to do is go back and interpret the Gemarot that seemingly go against this Rambam, right? Because the Rambam simply says, According to the Khatam Sofer, the way that I knew that according to my humble opinion, seems like the Ramam is saying is you're not allowed to go and visit Kivarim. However, we mentioned in the beginning, we have already from Kalev, what did he do? He went to Hebron and he went and he prayed to the to the uh our forefathers over there. And we have throughout the throughout Chazal, we have story, stories like this, right? We have a story of uh Rebbe, that one time, Rebbe Mani, but, but he, he had a problem with, uh, with uh, the Benesia, uh, the government, were try, they were giving him problems. And what did he do? He went and he, to his father's kever and he said, Abba, Abba, Hane Mitzaharuli, these people are bothering me. And then, okay, something happened there. Okay, that's one quick story. You have another story in Hagiga that uh, after Rebbe Yoshua, he said things that were not so good against Beit Shammai. Uh, he said, I'm in, their words, it doesn't, they're, I don't like their words, what they're saying. And then he, after he found out that the Beit Shammai has good reasoning behind what they said, so what did he do? He went and he, he went and he prostrated himself over the Kever of Beit Shammai and he said, He started having a conversation seemingly with the, with the, uh, the Kevarim of Beit Shammai. All right, so from all these cases, it sounds like there is a concept of visiting the Kivarim. Um, ah, we also have in the case of uh, with Yosef that Moshe Rabbeinu he went, uh, uh, he went to the Kever of Yosef and he told him, "Hey, it's a time to come, uh, time to get out of here." Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, so you have you have cases throughout Chazal that are implying that it's okay to talk with dead people. Not only it's okay to talk with dead people, I mean, that's already a very troubling, we have to work on that. But on top of it, you can visit Kivarim for sure. Um, and it seems like, like I just said, it seems like that they could be a Militz Yosher for you. What's a Militz Yosher? That they can be your advocate. They You can talk with them. They become your defendant. They can send a good word to the Ibish, to a God for you. And uh, seemingly that, the Rambam, get my camera, something going on. And seemingly that would be very problematic, according to the Rambam, the simple pshat. So, however, besides the Rambam, you have the Maharil that he says, of course, you can't learn the Maharil was from Germany before the before the Rosh, before uh, Marami Rottenberg. He writes there, he writes that, of course, it's not that they're talking to dead people. It's just the Makom Atzmo Goren Metifilau Lit Kabel. He holds that in all these cases in the Gemara, don't take it literally. It's just the place where their dead bodies are. It, there's become some certain element of Kiddusha there, which helps the, your tifila. It empowers your tifila to make it more effective, and therefore it's okay. Um, and I'll just read you his Lashon, because even on this, 
we're going to see people arguing about. He says that, um, he says, because since the tzaddikim are buried there, that place becomes holy. And therefore the tefillah is stronger over there on that holy land. However, when you're doing that, when you're praying to the when you're praying there, so this is very important words. He says, do not put your your emphasis or, and, or your don't direct your prayers to the dead people that are lying there rather ask Hashem on the zikhut of these people that are dead here that they're lying here that you should be matzliach in your you know in your whatever you're praying for so again he's using it as it's a it's a hot spot when you go to these places it's a hot spot to help you get better reception in your tefillah to Hashem that's how the Maharil is, is saying it the Ran the Ran also says like that uh, very similarly um, that he says uh, he says you can find a certain shefa there uh, he says yeah okay so the Ran also held like that. Uh, the Bach, the the Bach and the Shach, very interesting. They, they bring down a Tishuva from Rav Chaim Pel, uh, Paltiel, who writes that somebody who goes to the Beit Hakevarot, it seems, and it seems like you're doing Doresh Alametim. You're talking, you're trying to talk with dead people, uh, and he says that when Kalev, when he went to go in Hebron to talk with the Avot. He, he did it because the Makoma Kedosh there. He, again, just similar to like what we just said of the of um of the Ra and, and of the uh the Maharil. It says the ba, the the Rav Chaim Paltiel, he says the same thing there. They, they, he just did it because it was a Kodesh place there. The Chokhmat Adam as well, he says this is very interesting. The Chokhmat Adam, he writes that Otama Nashim, Ameha Aritz, the women and the uneducated, that they're going to Kivre Metim, Umidabrimima Metim, and they're speaking with the dead people. And they're talking about all their difficulties and troubles in life. Karova Davar Shem Bichla Doresh Elamitim says the Chokhmat Adam that they are seemingly very close on the edge with the Isur Deoraita of trying to speak with dead people and Maharami needs help like that uh, so there's there's definitely a lot of Rabbanim seemingly on the side of the Rambam however there's a Chiluk the Rambam the simple shot of the Rambam like the Hatam Sofer says you're not allowed to go to Kevarim at all so we still have to deal with that how did in the time of Chazal or the Chachamim are giving us all these Agadic, uh, Agadic stories of Chachamim going and Nevi'im going to the Kivre Tzadikim. Whereas this approach is a little easier to understand and digest based off all the stories of the Gemara, is that they're saying that, no, they went, but they didn't directly, don't take it literally when the Gemara says that they were talking directly to these people, rather to the dead people, rather they were just using that place as a hot spot. However, what gets all these Rabbanim in trouble, not in trouble, but meaning gives them problem, their pshat gets problematic is when you open up the Zohar. The Zohar brings many places throughout the Zohar, but we're going to focus on Aharimot, where it brings down that when you when when there's problems, when there's droughts, when there's all these things, you should go and directly talk to the tzaddikim. And the tzaddikim will be your representative, they will be your malitz yosher. Um, Right, he says uh, it's in Aramaic, but I'll just translate it outside. He's saying that when you go, when the living people go to the the the, the neshamot of the tzaddikim for whatever their needs are, then that's gonna the, the tzaddikim, their souls are going to be awakened, and they're gonna help you by advocating in front of Hashem for your behalf. So the simple pshat of the Zohar seemingly seemingly is that they're you're having direct communion with the dead people. Right, and even what's very fascinating too, this is a chidush of Rabbi Yasa. It says that the Zohar says that when you go to dead people, when you're going to the Kivrit Sadikim and you're talking with them, that's not considered Doresh Elamitim. Only when you're going to Kivre Goyim, that's and you're talking to the Goyim, that's when the Isur of Doresh Elamitim applies. Because why? Because Sadikim they are considered living. Their Torah, their life, they're forever and ever. 
So therefore, when you're asking them, when you're talking to them, when you're praying directly to them, you can consider that to be as you are talking to, uh, you're trying to seek somebody who's met because they're considered Hayim, they're still alive. So the, according to the Zohar, the only time you get the Yisur of Doresh el is when you are going to a Goy, a dead Goy, and trying to request things and get advice or answers from a dead Goy. But when you're going to a Jew, no problem according to the Zohar. So according to this, you know, everything that we said it wouldn't be problematic at all. And uh, the truth is, I saw even the Maaseh Rokah, he's a Mifaresh on the Rambam, he writes that, yes, the Rambam, for everything he said, however, right? he says, simply the shot of the Zohar is that you go there to directly talk with the Metim, and it's not a problem at all. Uh, there's also other Rishonim besides the Zohar that also seem to say like that. You have Sefer Hasidim. He, Sefer Hasidim writes that you go and talk with the dead people directly. You have uh, the Bach. Interestingly enough, he talks about, although he brought in the words of Rav Chaim Paltiel, he writes, he says, however, the Minhag already came to be that we, we go and talk with the dead people and nobody's protesting against it. That's a simple way of the, the Bach. If you read it closely, it sounds like a stira and the Bach. I dealt with it, but seemingly the Bach is saying, no, the Minhag Yisrael is you go and talk to dead people. Not a problem. And uh, the Shut Minhat El Azar, it was a Siddish Rebbe not so long ago, 100 something years ago, 100 years. He writes, yeah, he writes, he writes, he has a whole teshuvah trying to defend the Minhag of talking directly to the dead people. And he writes, look, we have all these Gemarot of Kalev, of... Uh, of everything we just brought above, he lists down each one, each one, and then he brings the Zohar, and he says, ah, you see, the pshat is that you're allowed to talk with dead people. It's not a problem at all. And believe it or not, Chamuvadi Yosef, in Yabiya Omer, he's also agreeing with the maskana, the, the final psak of the Minhat El Azar. That is true, you're allowed to talk with dead people. Again, the emphasis is that the Zohar is saying it's allowed, and the simple of the Gemara is that it's allowed, so therefore it's okay. So, you know, my own humble opinion again is that, uh, you know, of course, the Maharil and uh, Paltiel and all these other great Rabbanim, the Chokhmat Adam, that they said you're not supposed to, is because they're taking it as a derasha. You know, everything that we saw in the Gemara, it's Agada. Don't take it literally. And therefore, they have what to rely on. <laughs> um, see, they have what to rely on, meaning learning it in this way of not talking to the dead people directly. And even on the Zohar, you can say that the Zohar, you know, who says you have to take it literally as well? Yeah, it's true. The Zohar sounds like you're talking directly to the dead people. But just like the way we learn Midrashic Gemarot, you could also learn the Gemarot, the, 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 the Derashot of the Zohar in that same fashion. Who says you have to take it literally? You know, this is, of course, besides the Shita of the Geonim, the Shita of the Rambam, the Shita of uh, all the Hachamim from Andalusia, is that, you know, you don't take Agada literally, and especially if it goes against common sense and it goes against other halakhic principles, you never take it literally. It's just a derasha and it's not halakhically binding at all. So this becomes a real battle in school of thoughts is, are you taking these Agadic literatures literally or not, according to the Minhat al according to the, Ramb the, the Yabi Omer, Rav Ovadia, sounds like they're taking these things literally, and therefore they're, they're, um, they're, they're saying that you're actually allowed to, to pray and, and talk directly to these dead people. So first of all, the, we mentioned before Rav Moshe Tzuriel, uh, Shalom, he wanted to say that there's actually a machloket, there's a machloket, right? Be, according to the Minchat El Azar Vadia, there's not really a machloket. The Rambam, we learn it like the Radbaz, or we learn it like the Rivash, meaning that it's not talking about visit, visiting Sadiqim, visiting their Kevarim and praying at the Kevarim. The Rambam didn't even talk about praying towards the Kevarim. You know, so uh, so the, it's Satum, it's closed off. We can interpret it in different ways. However, um, the so therefore Rav Ovadi and the Minhat Elias said, look, we have all these cases, all the cases in the Gemara. We have the Zohar. We take it literally. You can be posek like that. However, Rav Moshe Suriel he wants to make a machloket in this. He wants to say that the Hachamim and the Gemara were not monolithic about this matter, and you have different shitot. 
you have all those cases in the Gemara, those Midrashim, the Agada, those stories about visiting dead people. That's according to one Shita. And that Shita is the Shita. How do we see this Machloket? We go back to the Gemara of Ta'anit. And in Ta'anit, just like we have some that say you go to the dead people to, to humble yourself. Okay, that Shita holds. You're not allowed to go and pray by Kivarim and make communion with the Kivarim. Whereas you have the other opinion that says, no, we want to make communion with them. We want to have Rahamim, get Rahamim from them. So it says Rav Moshe Suriel that ah, very simply, you have a machloket. And for those who are posek like Halakha, the simple pshat, the Rambam, the, the truth is the Ramah also brings the words of the Rambam. So according to that, ah, you should go like the Rambam. Or if you're a Mikubal and you go like the Zohar, okay, then you can go, no problem, you go like the the, like the Zohar, and that's a shita. It's just a machloket, just like we find many times. You know, there's the machloket between the the poskim versus what the Zohar says. Okay, yeah, the Zohar it was one shita, Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. That's the, the he's going with the shita that allows it, whereas the Rambam didn't allow it. Um. Right. So so that's one one interesting approach that I saw that he's just making into a machloket. Okay. Um, again, I, I wanted to say in my teshuvah that I was writing that, again, you don't have to make it a machloket. It's just, again, how you how you learn the sugiyot. I mentioned that before, that if you just learn everything's a derasha, don't take it literal. There's no machloket in the Gemara. There's no machloket in the, in the shas. You don't, you, you don't learn, you don't derive these halachi principles from these, these, uh, these derashot in Chazal. Um, even, and so, you know, I saw... To the extreme, the other uh, Rabbi Rav Shlomo Tzadok, he's a Yemenite uh, scholar, and I'm not sure if he's still alive or not, but he has his own perush in the Rambam. And there he writes, he's taking the, the Midrash of Kalev completely to the other extreme, saying that, you know, even Kalev didn't even go to Hebron. Don't take it literal that he went to Hebron. Rather, it's just coming to tell us uh, some type of lesson whatever it was, that he was standing out and being different than what they were doing. And on top of it, because he, he asked questions, how come Yoshua wasn't there with Kalev? How come he, he put some mitzvah to go and talk with the, the, the Kevarim? How come he wasn't there with him as well? And on top of it, he brings down that the Yemenai Minhag is that they would never, ever, 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 ever go to Kivre, to the Kevarim, Kivre Tzadikim, even to the Kevarim of their parents. For them, they took like the simple pshat of the Rambam. You're not allowed to go and visit Kevarim. However, to almost finish up here the problem with this approach which seemingly seems nice the simple part of the Rambam you're not allowed to go to Kivarim the Khatam Sofer said that this Rav Shlomo Tzadok said that seems like you could be on the border the edge of Darke Mori according to the Chokmat Adam visiting them again the Chokmat Adam was talking about when you're directly talking with them but the Rambam according to the Khatam Sofer the extremity of it is that you can't even go to Kivarim the problem is is that we have actually if anybody was here on the shiur that we gave on going to Harabayit, we have a Teshuvah of the Rambam when he visited Yushalayim in the year 1146 when the Rambam went to Yerushalayim when he went to Eretz Yisrael first it says I'll read you the Teshuvah here he says that Bayom Shelishi Beshabbat uh, he says this is a letter that he wrote to to uh, Rav Yifat Bar Eliyahu Adayan he wrote it to Rav Yifat Adayan who was in Israel and he's he's talking about the recollections of of them traveling together he says when we went we left Akko and from Akko we went to Yerushalayim even though there was a Sakana there Right, and this for anybody who was in the Harabait thing, we said this is the Mekor that the Rambam went to Harabait. He went on Harabait and he prayed. And then he says, Ubihad Bishabbat, Tisha Bechodesh. Then on Sunday, so this was on Thursday. And then on Sunday, the Sunday after Shabbat, he says, Yatsati mi Ushalaim le Hebron. I went to Hebron. We left Yushalaim, went to Hebron. Le Nashek Kivre Abotai bi Ma'ara. Uh, to go and kiss the kevarim of my forefathers in the Ma'ara Machbila. Ve'ota, ve'oto 
יום עמדתי במערה, and then I went in the מערה המכפלה, והתפללתי שבח לאל על הכל, and I prayed to Hashem on everything. And he says, on these two days I made him to like a Yom Tov, a Simcha, etc. So, <laughs> what's happening here? We see that the Rambam himself is saying that it's okay to go to Kevarim, and maybe perhaps we have to learn the Rambam like the Radbaz or the Bivash. That, uh, yeah, no, of course, everybody can go to Kevarim and pray by Kevarim. It's just the problem, again, from the Rambam, Dalit Amot, away from the Kevarim. Of course, we have to say that when the Rambam was in the Ma'ara, he was away from whatever Kever there was there. But nevertheless, the Ramam is saying that you can go and pray at the... Uh, he's testifying, testimony, that he himself went there and did some type of tefillah there. And not only that, and the shika as well, he kissed the kevarim. Like what many people do, they go to the kever and they kiss it. Which is, uh, you know, a, a common thing we do for all Tashmi Shekidusha. We take, we, we go next to it, the Sefer Torah, we kiss it. Uh, our own parents' hand, Rashi brings down the minhag already of kissing... Uh, kissing your father's hands, uh, they, he was doing these type of things. So how this, you know, this is problematic for everything we just said in the name of the Hatam Sofer, the Rav Tzadok, what he said. Uh, so so because of this, I saw there are some, again, to call them Maimonidean scholars, that they do not like this Teshuva. And they try to go every single line and try to okay it, to try to up, uproot every single line in the Teshuva. And say that it, it's mizuyaf. It was a forged teshuvah. The Rambam did not write this teshuvah. This teshuvah, there are other teshuvah that the Rambam did go to Harabayit. But this teshuvah, it's not a good teshuvah. It's forged. And the main reason that they don't like it is because the Rambam's talking about visiting Kevarim. <laughs> going to Mara, Mara Machpelah. Uh, the thing is that Rav Shilat, who is the expert in the Igrot of the Rambam, in the teshuvah of the Rambam, and generally in all Mishneh Torah, he writes, you know, he's, I don't know if anybody worked on the Mishra Torah more than him and on the words of the Ramban. Perhaps he did even more than of Kafe. And he writes that 100% he looked into it, that this is an authentic Teshuvah. Besides the fact that we have great Rishonim bringing this down as well, uh, Sefer Haredim, etc. This is a proper Teshuvah that we can be so mech on it. And not only that, I mean, before that, I wanted to answer, let's say this is a real Teshuvah. Maybe, let me hear what you guys think. This is all speculation. Uh, this was what I was thinking in the past day. Is that perhaps we can say that that the Ma'arat Machpela, it's different than regular Kevarim. Because that is the place, the Midrashim say that, that's the, the Torah says explicitly, that was the first place where Avraham Avinu did a Kinyan on Eretz Yisrael. So because of the historical significance and what happened there and what took place there, and that was a place for the Avot and Imaot to have that everlasting place. You know, the Midrash says that even if you know the Goim say that you stole Eretz Yisrael, on three things they can't say, and this is one of them. Ma'arata uh, Machpila, the Beit HaMikdash, and the Kivurato Shel Yosef. But so for sure, this is the, but this is the first acquisition Avram Avinu made in Eretz Yisrael. So therefore, there is a certain Kiddusha there that is different because of the historical significance of what happened on that place. And therefore, maybe we could say that the Rambam would allow you to go to Ma'arat HaMachpelah, even to pray there, because of the significance of what happened there. And, you know, he didn't go there as a regular Bikur of Kivrei Tzadikim, Levaker Kivrei Tzadikim. He went there because it's a different uh, it's a different entity. It's outside of the genre of, of Kivrei Tzadikim. Okay, so perhaps that's an option. And therefore, because this is really the only evidence we have of the Rambam going to a Kevin. Um, besides that, we have another option, uh, no, no, a problem that Rabbi Avram ben Rambam, the son of the Rambam, he writes in his uh, in his perush on Bereshit. It's a beautiful edition from Rabbi Maimon. Moshe Maimon lives in New York, so or Lakewood. So he, the Rabbi Avram ben Rambam on the Torah when it talks about when Devorah she passed away, who was the the wet nurse of Rivka, and it says where she was buried. Mitahad lebetel. She was buried there. And the Rambam, Rabbi Avram, it's in Arabic, but I'll translate the translation in Hebrew is, is ve'efshar shayu mevakrim et kivra mitpalelim sham. Says Rabbi Avram in a Rambam that the reason why the Torah went out of its way to tell us where Devorah was buried is to show us that people were going there and praying there. They were visiting the kever and mitpalelim sham. 
And the sheet of the, actually we don't have to get into this, but the Torah itself is telling us, and we learn many things from the Avot, you know, even though it's before Matan Torah, maybe you want to say something like that, it's before Matan Torah, and therefore we can't learn from there, but whatever, that in the Torah, you see that there was this concept of going and praying by uh, Kivrei Sitkaniot, you know, the, the righteous women. Um, and, and we know there's the, the Maram El Shakar, he was a rabbi in Egypt that writes, he has a famous teshuvah about when Ben Hashem Ashot, if arguing on Rabbi Nutam, once we have a haburashi on that. And there he writes in his teshuvah that she adua lechol aviv. All the words, we know that all the words of Rabbi Nuavam and Rambam come straight from his father. So even though, you know, it's possible that this is just a perush on, on his own and we don't have to say per se that the Rambam held like this, in general, the apple doesn't fall so far from the tree. And Rabbi Nuavam and Rambam is usually following in the path, the hashkafa of his father. And it was so negative, the Torah, and so even on the border of Darkei Morim, you know, the seemingly the Rabbi Nuavam and Rambam wouldn't write that uh, such an isur or, or write something like that, that uh, the Torah is me'ed, that they were going to visit her. Um, so I wanted to give a different uh, approach Different approach than the Hatam Sofer, different approach than the, the Yemenite rabbi and the Rav Sadok, and a different approach than what major Maimonidean people, they try to prove from the Rambam. The Rambam is very against going to Kivret Sadikim. The Rambam, his Lashon, what he used, is Asur Levakera Kevarot. He, sorry, Michila. He didn't say Asur Levakera Kevarot. He said, Lo Yefane Adam Levakera Kevarot. Right? If the Lashon was Asur Levaker Kevarot, it's forbidden to go and visit Kevarot, then I would understand, okay, there's an actually an Isur to go, and there could be an Isur on the, uh, because you're breaching Doresh El Ametim, and therefore it's very severe. But the Ramam didn't say that. He just said, he just threw it in there in the Halakha, Lo Yefane Adam Levaker Kevarot. Lo Yefane, that Lashon, you know, saying Lo instead of saying Asur, Usually also in the Ramah, many times in Hilchot De'ot, in many places, he writes, don't do this, don't do that. But it's not saying as an Isur. It's more of a of a uh, a proper mode of conduct uh, he's trying to embed within us. And, and therefore, seemingly, you know, you can say that, first of all, there's not an Isur to the Ramah, because if it was Dor Shalomitim, who should have told us? Number two, the words, Lo Yifane, that the Ramah chose, he chose it very carefully, is that if you look throughout the Rambam, whenever he uses the word lo yefane, again, yefane means yefanot, to, to face towards. But when the Rambam uses it in other places, he's using it as a very, very deep embedded machshava thought within a person. Meaning that it becomes your essence. For example, in Hilchot Avod Zara, he says, um, he says, all these lavin, all these surim of Avod Zara, it's... One inyan, one matter. The Ramah, he's talking about doing Avodah Zarah. And to be, use the Lashon, don't go, meaning it's becoming your essence. You become an Ovid Avodah Zarah. It becomes your Hashkafa, your essence, your thought process. That's when it's a problem. That's, that's, that's what's going on here in Avodah Zarah. Also, we, saw, we are in Isur he says, you have to, a person has to give and a start to divrei Torah. Again, what does that mean? The Rambam is telling us we have to make this our essence, our goal, our matara in life is to make Torah as the, you know, learning Torah, learning Chokhmah, that's our essence. And there's a few other places in Mishra Torah as well as, uh, that he uses this word yifane as not as a simple going visiting. Not, he didn't say just rak levaker. Rather, he says, Lo yefane adam lefaker, meaning, Lo yefane means, do not make it as part of your yahadut, part of your essential Judaism, to go and visit graves. So again, visiting graves before the Rambam means, like the zihara, the Arabic word, visiting. Going and visiting the way people go and visit Kifay Sadiqim. However, the, what the Rambam was against is actually making it a essential part of your Judaism. And could be, be perhaps it's because he's bringing it there about the emphasis is on their divrehem, their maasehem, and not their kivrehem. So again, because there's a chashash that when a person gets too involved with these things, when he gets too much into going to kevarim, ah, it can become problematic. It can become 
now he's starting to do on the on the getter of Doresh el Amitim. Again. However, stump to go every now and then to go and kiss a kever at Sadiq or to uh, of course, as long as you're not gonna pray to it, according to Rambam, Lifi Anyu Dati, it wouldn't be a problem. And I saw also the Shevet Alevi, a big posek, or wasn't that he actually writes as well, that that's what the Rambam meant. So I was very happy to see that he as well had that. And just regard if uh, we have a few more seconds regarding the Rambam or what the halacha would be about writing a letter to uh, the Rebbe, um, which is something, you know, very common now. And I'm not sure if Donald Trump, when he did go to visit the, the Kever of the Lubavitch Rebbe, did he write a letter to him? Probably. I'm sure they, they made him do that as well. But that, uh, that uh, what would be the problem with that is, first of all, First of all, there's a whole machlok in the Gemara if dead people know what's going on in this world. It's a whole machlok in Gemara Berachot if they're, dead people know what's going on. Tosafot, he brings down in Sota that the maskana of the Gemara is that dead people do not know. And therefore, he has a problem with Kalev. How did he go and talk with the dead people, uh, with the uh, Avot when he went to Hebron? So Tosafot has to answer. He says, no, through the tefillah that he prayed to Hashem, Hashem let the dead people know and then they helped him out. So, again, it has to go through tefillah. So, first of all, when you're writing a letter, you know, that wouldn't work because, first of all, dead people, to say that the dead people, they know what's going on in the world, okay, maybe. But not to say that they know what's written in a letter to them, even Tosafot, who says, no, it has to be through tefillah, that goes to Hashem and then back, ah, okay. But to write a letter directly, and that's going to be folded, to so go that far and say that the dead person can know that, that's uh, already going beyond that. And it's not something that's found in Mibusas, throughout anywhere in Hazal. So you have to be careful for these, these type of things. Um, and the truth is, is that as opposed to praying to them, let's say those opinions that held you could pray to dead people and you can talk with them directly, like the, the simple Pshar, the Zohar and everything, that's you're doing some type of Maaseh that's similar to Tefillah. And really, we know dibur lafke maasedam. You're not, you're just speaking, you're talking, okay? But now when you're actually doing and writing something, Writing is a physical thing that people do to other people. I want to talk with you. I want to send you a letter. Okay, so ben adam, ben adam, we do that to each other. But to extract from that and not to do that to a dead rabbi and trying to get it from that, now it's, now it seems like you're getting on the gather of Dor Shalem especially that the Rambam, he in Hilochot Abu Razara, after he writes the classic cases of Dor Shalem he tells us, Klalo Shel Davar. What's the general rule? Anytime you do something so you can have some type of interaction and even a correspondence with a dead person, that is on the that is the Yisur of, of uh, Dor Shalem Eitim. And therefore, in my humble opinion, a person should stay far away from these type of actions of, uh, of doing that. However, like we said before, stop visiting every now and then to the to Kever Tzadik and, you know, just... Uh, using that location as a makom kadosh uh, for tefillah, if you're outside of Dal Amot from it, every now and then, not a problem. The Rambam held, he did hold that people should not do this as a as a part of their essential Judaism. You know, you have people, even the uh, the, um, the the shoot of the uh, of Rav uh, Weiss, he brings down, he brings down that the, is that right here? No, I didn't quote it here, but the Shevet Levi he brings down that that people, they have like a, that's part of their duties. And now that every day they're going to different Kivarim. He says, that's the Ram was talking against that. And it, it could lead to other Hashkafic issues as well. But Stam, every now and then to go, I don't think that is what the Ram was referring to. And I don't think that would be problematic. Sorry for taking guys over time. Thank you so much, Chacham. If anyone has any questions, they can raise their hand, unmute. Oh, I'm reading these messages. I have a question. What is the grave? Okay, from Claudia, uh, Regina. Uh, I have a question. What is the grave besides the bones? Does the soul remains in there? How can the Rebbe answer letters? <laughs> yeah, exactly. There, I I remember reading Rav Yosef Mishash is a chuva about uh, Meron and Kivret Tzadikim. Also, he says, and he says, if you want to talk with the dead people or that zechut of the dead per person, you could do it from your home. Why? What? What significance do you have there at the kever? What? What's going on there? So yeah, it's a very valid point. It's uh, it's it's so you're taking something and making it so physical 
that okay maybe it's a makom kadosh the rambam the furthest he would go i would believe and this is based off the rabbin ravam and rambam is that there is a certain kedusha for whatever happened in that area or the, the of the kivre of the tzaddik is there there's a kedusha there but now to actually make it into you know when you're doing this communion with the tzaddik and has to be in that area on that area where he's buried that's it's going way too far um uh, Simon said Ziara was used for pilgrimage tours to holy sites, especially in Eretz Israel. Ah, he translated a whole exhibition catalog about this. Oh, beautiful! Please send that to me. That's amazing. Um, ironically enough, one of the popular sites for Ziara that the exhibition talked about was the Ramam's Kever in Tiberias. <laughs> very nice. And we're not even sure if that's the actual Kever if he's there or not. So uh, that's very interesting. How's that? Okay. Thank you so much, Racham. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Yeah. We'll catch you for another shoot. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.